So if you've been one of those that senses that sinking feeling, that senses that fear or feels the fear spirit, some people even get that the goosebumps when they feel something fearful, like that's really literally a fear spirit that they're feeling and their body's responding to it. So that can tell you, of course, there's danger. That can, of course, if you're in a situation, really what I need to say in this video to keep it really simple is if we're in God's will, if we've matured in the faith, if we live by his way, then we don't need to really get those feelings in our body about things that we're warned about. Or if we do get it in our body, we'll already know because God will have told us. So I have this scripture up on the screen, and this is the big revelation that I'm having now about this. And I know we're all coming into a new time. There's a convergence of, even in my dreams, it's been timelines. The convergence of timelines just means it's his timing. It's his Kairos time. It's his, it's his time that he sets out, that he appoints. It's his appointed time. So that's what I mean by this convergence of timelines. It's his appointed time and he gets to say, okay, this is what I'm doing for my people. So this is, you know, he's doing stuff for his people. And one of the things that he does is he frees us from the bondages of lots of different things. And one of the things that he must be doing for us, because I was feeling it, was this fear thing. So it's pretty early in the morning. I was getting ready for work. I had this feeling and I was started to go through that same thing that I always went through. Okay, what? who is it? What's going on? What's about to happen? What do I need to do? Uh, what do I need to bind? But instead of that, I decided God would have told me if something was going to go wrong. He talks to me in my dreams all the time. He gives me words every day. I'm in regular conversation with him. He didn't say anything. He didn't warn me of anything or anybody. And so that that sinking feeling was just the voice of my body, going to the word, often asking him about things. And this is how he wants us to live. So I'm not saying that everybody's there and I'm not, not saying that everybody's ready to be there. It's a process to get to that place, that that relationship. But he wants us there and when he gets us there, it frees us from this whole, the language of the body stuff. So the body doesn't have to tell us things that are dangerous. They still can, but it will reinforce what we already know because God already told us. So in Matthew uh, 2, 12, it says, but God warned the wise men in a dream not to go back to Herod. So the wise men had gone to look for the star and it's sort of like a convergence. The, the star was in the right place in the sky that they were able to find the the child, the baby Jesus. And so God warned them, don't go back to Herod, because Herod had sent them to sort of scope it out. And Herod, of course, was an enemy of Jesus. They didn't go back. Um, and then it says, so they went home to their country in a different way, okay? Verse 13, so they were warned in a dream. Then after the wise men left, an angel from the Lord came to Joseph in a dream. So again, he came to Joseph in a dream and he said, get up, take the child with his mother, which is Mary, and escape to Egypt. Herod wants to kill the child and will soon start looking for him. Stay in Egypt until I tell you to come back. So Joseph got ready and left for Egypt with the child and the mother. So this is the warning. This is instructions. This is specific. I want you to do exactly this because this is what your enemy wants to do. Stay there until I tell you. So he got inst complete instructions and he did end up getting a dream that told him when to come back later on. So he got ready. So of course he was obedient and knew and, and went. So this is the life when you're close to the Lord. He talks to you like a person would call you. And he'll tell you something. And he'll often do it in a dream because he opens our ears at night because we can't hear as well when we're awake because of the busyness of the world. So the Bible says that he opens our ears at night so we can hear him. So we want to make sure that they heard, that the wise men heard, and that Joseph heard, and they heard. <laughs> 
And they didn't have to get chills. They didn't have to get a sinking feeling. They didn't have to go, oh, I'm feeling something weird in my body. What's up? What do I need to bind? <laughs> so I just, not. I'm not making fun of that because we have to get through the spiritual warfare. We have to get through the old way of having been super sensitive to feel things because we do have a spiritual sensitivity. We will always have the discernment of spirits and the ability to know what spirit is upon people. It's going to be used in, especially in end times to be able to help people get delivered and to, you know, all the things that we need to do for ministry. But um, we won't need to feel anything. We won't have to be guided by our feelings at all. Again, I want to say again, I don't want you to get the impression that if you get a sinking feeling not to listen to it, that's not what I'm saying. But if you get a sinking feeling and you're close to God and he hasn't showed you anything related to that sinking feeling, that's just something trying to get you off course. So in that moment, I made a decision. My life is going to be different from here forward. I know God would have told me and he didn't. So I'm not even going to engage the whole thought process of what do I need to bind? What do I, who is it? What's going on? Why is this coming at me now? Everything seems absolutely fine. Things are good. No, I'm going on with the things of my day. So I just went on with the things of my day. I had a lot that God wanted me to do. He told me what to do. It was going to be very, it's been very full and I'm, I'm blessed by it. It's very blessed. It's very blessed. And I'm so um, blessed to be in this place because it's been tedious forever. Um, a tedious life. <laughs> it's been a tedious life. And God made me probably scientific for a reason. And he made you be able to be tedious, you know, to be able to go through the tedious things too, because it is, it's just forever, forever, forever. Just never seems like it's going to end, but it, it really does. It really does. And so uh, we can get on to the things we, we can, we don't have to worry and go through all that process. And just as soon as I decided that, that feeling went away and it didn't come back. And I just knew there was something new here. And I wanted to share it. And it's hard to share it because I don't really completely understand it. But the scripture had come up in my heart. And it was confirmation to me that this whole thing is tied up in how God speaks to us. And he won't, he doesn't want to speak to us in a way that gives us a feeling that feels bad in our body. He'll do it because he, out of grace and mercy, he'll do it when we're not connected to him, when we can't hear him. But once we get close with him, the reward is he's not going to give us bad feelings about anything. He's just going to tell us, you need to go here. Here's why. And here's what to do. And I'm going to tell you when to leave. Yeah, you just don't have to suffer anything. You just get moving. So I thank you, Father, for this quick word and just speaking on this sensing, uh, the sensitivity to things and how you set us free from any sensitivities ultimately that don't feel good. And you give us discernment and you keep our eyes open to the things of the spirit, but we don't have to experience them as we, as we recognize them. And that's just such a grace. And I just pray that for everybody that we're walking into a time when we, we just hear the instruction and we don't feel the instructions. So praise God. I'll see you guys in another video. Bye for now.